Hello and welcome to The Wargamer and you're joining me for another painting tutorial. This time I'll be showing you how to paint the Mark IV male tank employed by the British in World War I using the Ammo Ranger paints by Mig Jimenez to do so. The first task after cleaning and assembling the miniature is to prime it. This is so that all the subsequent layers of paint will adhere to the surface nicely. Now I'm using MIG's one-shot grey primer for this. I'm using this through my airbrush at around about 20 PSI. You want to just lightly dust the miniature from around about, um, about 20 to 30 centimetres away. And this will just build up the layers really nicely. Leave around about 5 minutes drying time between your application of the layers. Just make sure you cover the entirety of the miniature. And then leave for about 24 hours for the primer to dry. After priming, the first task is to apply some pre-shading. Now we're starting off with the shadows, and for this I'm using grey base. Now I want to focus the application of this particular layer around the bottom section of the tank, underneath any crevices, and also in between the panel lines on the miniature as well. As with the rest of my steps here, I've mixed in just a small amount of thinner, roughly two parts paint to one part thinner, and using around about 20 psi through my airbrushes. This will give you the best control and coverage possible. The second step in pre-shading involves applying some matte white to the main panels of the tank. And we want to focus this mainly on the uh, middle sections of the panels and focusing more towards the upper section so we have a nice gradient going from the lighter white at the top down to the darker grey towards the bottoms. We also want to make sure we pick out any of the top hatches and panels using this matte white as well as that will just really bring out the detailing in the miniature. Now that pre-shading is completed, we can now start adding some colour to the tank, and for this I'll be using green moss. Now we want to very lightly apply this over the surfaces of the tank, so that we still have the uh, darker recesses that we painted in the previous pre-shading steps still visible, and that will just really enhance the shading and definition in the tank. You may notice that I'm holding the airbrush slightly further away from the tank's surfaces than I did in the previous steps. We don't need quite as much control in this step, we just want to apply a very light dusting over the entire surface and really bring out that green colour. The next base coat to apply will be to the tracks themselves. Now for this, I'll be using a brown soil. Now this is a great colour for getting that dirty, rusted track effect that we'll be going for on this particular miniature. Now when using the airbrush, just be very careful not to overspill onto the areas that we've already painted. If you overspill a little bit, that's not a problem. It'll just create the effect of uh, mud and dirt that's seeped onto the rest of the miniature and will be covered up in later stages anyway. The next area of the tank that we'll be painting will be the egg source. And this will be using a red-brown shadow. Now this will create a really nice rusted metal effect on the egg source itself. Now you can actually paint this straight from the pot itself. The paint is already quite thin. Now you want to just make sure that you don't spill it over onto any of the green areas of the tank when painting the egg source. With the base coat of red brown shadow applied, the next step is to use red brown base to lighten the colour slightly. Now, red brown base is a slightly more orangey colour as well, so this will just enhance the rust effect that we're going for. When applying this, you want to focus it mainly towards the top sections of the exhaust, leaving the dark colour visible in the recesses. The next area to base coat are the machine guns both on the front of the hull and also on the side sponsons as well. For this, we'll be using grey base. We just want to apply a nice and even base coverage over these areas and this will really make them stand out from the green areas of the rest of the tank. The next area of the tank that we'll be painting will be the identification markings on the front of the hull. Now these are red and white stripes and before we actually paint these areas we need to prepare the panels first of all. Now I'll be applying a gloss varnish on these areas and this will protect the paint underneath when we start applying things like chipping fluid and then removing the paint from later steps. So for this step you just want to use a gloss varnish, any will do, but you want to just brush it onto the first two panels on both sides of the hull. With the gloss varnish dry, you'll now want to mask off the first two panels on either side of the hull. Once this is done, you can now apply the chipping fluid over these first two panels. Now I'm using the Scratches Chipping Fluid from MIG to do this, and I'm running this through my airbrush. Now you just want to apply several thin layers over these first two panels. With the chipping fluid dry, we can now start applying our white paint. But before we do this, I'd recommend masking off the red stripe on the center of the panel. Once this has been done, you can now start applying some white paint through your airbrush. You just want to lightly dust the surface, steadily building up the layers until you have a really nice, crisp white surface to work from. With the white areas completed, you'll now want to remove the central strip of masking tape that we applied to protect the area that we'll be painting red. Once this has been done, you now want to mask over the white areas with some masking tape. Just be careful not to press on too hard as you don't want to pull the paint off from the surface. Now from here you should be left with a single green stripe and I'm going to be applying the red paint over the surface. Now for this I'm using Rot Brawn but you could use any uh, reddish brown or red paint for this. And remember just as before to steadily build up the layers with thin coats. 
Once the red paint has dried, you can now remove the masking tape. This should leave you with two white stripes and a single red stripe between them. At the moment though, it's looking very pristine and we want to remove some of the chips. And this is where the chipping fluid comes in that we applied in a previous step. Now to use this, you'll first of all want to flood the surface with some water. With this done, you can bring in a dry, stiff brush and delicately remove the paint from the surface. Just use some very light motions and the paint should re remove quite easily. And this just gives the effect of paint that's chipped off over time. The next task in painting our tank is to add some dirt and weathering. But before this, we want to, first of all, protect the tank. Now I'm using a gloss varnish through my airbrush for this, but you could use a similar satin varnish or a spray varnish from an aerosol can. Now this will have two effects. First of all, it'll protect the base coat layers from future steps, but also prevent any more chips from being removed from the areas that we painted in the previous steps. With the varnish dry, we can now begin with our weathering. And first of all, I'll be applying some clay brown through my airbrush, and I'll be uh, gently dusting this onto the bottom of the tank, and especially around the tracks. And this will just create the effect of ingrained dirt and dust that's built up over the surfaces. The next step in painting our tank is to apply a filter over the surface. Now for this, I'm going to be using tan for three-tone camo. Now I've mixed in some thinners with this, roughly one part filter to two part thinners. And this just gives me a really nice mixture that I can apply over the surface of the tank. Now this will pull into the recesses and especially around the rivets and really bring out those details and give the impression that dirt has really built up and has ingrained itself into the surface and paint of the tank, especially where we have these nooks and crannies. After the filter has been dried, we can now start applying some chipping to the surface of the tank. Now for this, I'm going to be using Red Brown Shadow again. Instead of using an airbrush or a regular brush for this step, I'll instead be using a sponging technique. Now I've dipped a small amount of sponge into the paint and removed some of the excess, and I'll be gently dabbing this across the surface. I would recommend that you focus this around areas that you would imagine chips to occur. So this is going to be around edges and also around some moving parts. With the chipping completed, the next step is to bring back some definition to the armor panels. Now for this, I'm going to be using grey base mixed with some thinner in roughly one-to-one -one quantities. And we want to target this particular wash down into the recesses. This will really bring the detailing between the panels out. And pretty much anywhere where you've got a hard or deep recess, you can apply this grey base mix. The next area to paint will be the tracks. Now at the moment they're looking very clean and pristine and we want to add some dirt and rust. And for this I'll be using a wash of clay brown mixed with roughly one part clay brown to two parts thinner. We want to apply this over the entirety of the tracks making sure that it pulls into all of the recesses around the nuts and also the tracks themselves. Once dry this will create a rusted and dirt effect on the tracks. The final step in painting our tank is to apply some watermarks. Now for this I'll be using a stone grey mixed in one part stone grey to two parts thinner. Using this mixture we want to gently dab it onto the surface of the tank anywhere you would imagine water would accumulate. Then using a brush loaded with thinners you want to drag the paint downwards. This will create some nice rain and water streaking effects along the armour. And here we have the completed Mark IV male tank. Now whilst this tutorial focused exclusively on the Mark IV tank, you could apply the exact same colours and techniques to any of the World War I British era tanks. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below, as well as subscribing to be kept up to date with all of my future content. Additionally, to be kept up to date with the projects that I'm currently working on, do be sure to check out both my Facebook and Instagram pages, which you can also find links to in the description below. And finally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you should check out my Patreon page. From there, you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which has really helped me in producing future content. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.